Lauren is the Social Media and Website Manager at the Illinois Housing Development Authority. Dan has worked within the Marketing and Communications Department during his four years at the Authority. He believes passionately in IHDA's mission of financing the creation and preservation of affordable housing throughout the state to increase the supply of decent and safe places for people of low or moderate means to live. Connie Helmlinger joined the North Carolina Housing Finance Agency in 2004 and has held various positions during her tenure. She is currently Manager of Communications, where she directs the agency's marketing, public relations, website, and social media management, and coordinates a statewide annual conference and awards program. Thank you both for being with us today. And Dan, I will turn it over to you. Thanks, Ann. I appreciate it. Um, just trying to get to my next slide here. Went too far. Okay. Um, well, really quickly, uh, and thanks again for the introduction, and thanks for the invite for allowing me to to share what we're doing here at IDA um, with everyone on the call. Um, you know, it's an exciting time of the year. It's uh, as marketers, I think we should all really, you know, really take you know take advantage, seeing that this is the national you know it's it's a national month for to celebrate home ownership. So it's not just here in Illinois or North Carolina. It's something that we get to you know. We're uniquely positioned to, to you know, come should talk about home ownership across the country. So um, it's something that we try to take advantage of, and so naturally, I'll, I want to share with you some of the tactics that we're, we've implemented for the year. Um, really briefly, you know, you see in the screen some facts on millennials and home buying. Um, you know, of course, naturally, our goal is to reach uh, millennials. So I wanted just to really briefly take the group here through uh, what we're doing to target them. So I think most of us know that they're aged roughly 20 to 21 to 36, and then there's a total of 66 million individuals and 24 million independent households in the U.S. The median age for first-time home buyers is, you know, virtually unchanged for the past 40 years. As recent as 2015, it was 31 years old compared to, you know, roughly 30 years old and in, in between 70 and 74. Um, Two-thirds of millennials haven't reached the home buying age of 31, and 22% are under 25 years old. And then millennials are renting for a median age of six years before buying compared with the median five years for renters in 80, <clears throat> 1980. And the millennials are expected to form 20 million new households in 2025. So there really are our, our future, they're our, they're our target, that's who we need to try and speak to. Um, and then of course the medium income for a millennial <clears throat> older than 25 is uh, $38,220. So um, just briefly I wanted to touch on some of the barriers to entry that we see with millennials. Um, we've all seen countless articles why they're not buying yet. Um, and there certainly may be a lot more, many more factors than what I have listed here. I've just tried to distill it down to three. And actually, I don't know if any of you caught the, the HUD webinar last Thursday with Dr. Carson. Um, I know that these three came up quite a bit. In fact, the very first one, Lawrence Young with the National Association of Realtors, uh, really harped home on this one that, uh, that millennials, you know, they have this misperception that 20% is needed for a down payment and they're not aware of down payment options and they don't realize they can put as little as 3% down or, you know, even 1% here in Illinois. So um, that's something that we need to try and um, overcome and, and, and in a lot of our messaging that I'll kind of take you through, that's kind of what we tried to implement. Um, they're unaware of the value proposition of owning a home, so we need to con try and convince them that ownership, home ownership builds wealth. You know that it's that it's very tangible. It's um, it's a true investment. Um, but the other barrier to entry is lack of inventory, which in turn creates affordability issues. So the aspiration is there, but due to affordability affordability issues, younger buyers tend to feel overwhelmed and aren't sure where to start. So um, not to plug um, not to not to plug uh, Connie's presentation. Who follows me? I, you'll see her in her presentation that I think they do a really nice job of um, trying to make you know, to sort that path out for, for, for homeowners, uh, for millennials to try and let, let them show them their, their way. So, um, so as I stated, so our efforts during homeownership month, our goal is of course to create awareness for homeownership month and to ultimately increase reservations. We want to reach aspiring homeowners in Illinois, however the audience, you know, prim, prim, primarily millennials. And then messaging, you know, make prospective buyers really feel the power of home ownership. It's, you know, it's not just about buying a starter home. You know, millennials, they want the home. They, you know, they're not 
looking to to flip a home after you know five years. This they're looking for a place to you know to grow roots. So during um, home ownership up for month for us, um, we've created, a, you know, to engage millennials and all home buyers throughout Illinois, we've created a digital effort that consists of the following, um, our ida.org website integration, um, our targeted Facebook ad, ad buys, targeted Google AdWord buy, promoted tweets on Twitter, and then some home ownership quick tips, um, which are used across all of our social channels. Um, and just really to, I wanted to note really quick that we're also working concurrently on a larger digital marketing strategy. So this is kind of us, you know, we're in the uh, the three foot side of the pool and we're slowly wading into the, you know, the, to the deep end. So um, we see this more as, a, as a, a great launching point for us as we, you know, I'm collaborating with one of my colleagues in, in the, on our home ownership team to really build something that's much more robust than what we're doing now. So we're really excited about that. and. Um, you know, looking for looking for this as a launch point to grow further. So I'll start really just really briefly about our website integration. You know, it's it's our hub. It's where we direct people to, and it's where they find more information. So, and since it's the source of our programs, we created a homepage takeover or pop up really to celebrate the month. You know, create awareness about home ownership and and generate leads for our top performing loan officers. So um, I'm not going to actually take you through the website, but if you go to ihdaida.org. Um, you'll see um, once you arrive on our homepage, this uh, we have a, a pop-up that simply comes up um, that really, as you can see here on the screen, celebrate Home Ownership Month, and uh, the message is, is tight and targeted with you know up to $7,500 cash to close on your on your new home. Again, you know, trying to capitalize that, you know. If, if people think that 20% savings is a barrier, or I don't have savings, period, we want to make sure that they're aware that you know with with one of with First Home Illinois, our, our you know our marquee home ownership program, that the $7,500 can really make a difference and get you there. So at any rate, you know it's very simple. It's once the user's there, they type in their name, they type in their email, and we deliver them. Um, a very nice, robust um, one-page infographic. <clears throat> so it's laid out in a matrix to give our audience a quick and easy read about our home ownership programs, which are At Home Illinois, First Home Illinois, and iRefi, which is a refinance program. Um, so once the visitor's done looking at the at this, um, you know they're sent directly to our Finding a Lender page. So this will enable, enable them to close the deal, so to speak, or take that next step. Um, and you know, we did this kind of intentionally. The thinking was, you know, more as, you know, just off, you know, brainstorming, we thought we'd create sample infographics um, or, you know, our, our flyers for our, our programs. And in, you know, collaborating with the home ownership team here, we really felt like doing a, a matrix of our programs with, you know, a, a quick and easy read where they can see what they're getting. We thought that would be a, a really great way to catch, um, uh, a millennial target who you know wants the information fast they want it now and you know this this gets them to that next step so um, but as I mentioned we're collecting the visitors name and email addresses and then importing them into MailChimp so once we capture all the names we're going to divide them up and send them to our top list of uh, our top lenders as as uh, you know leads for contact and follow-up so you know it's really a true lead generation tool so next, I'll segue really quickly to our targeted Facebook buys. Of course, I'm sure most everyone here is familiar with doing those. Um, we've recently used Facebook to grow awareness for our iRefi program, and it's helped us quite a bit. Um, and we've targeted down to the zip code level. In this case, we were targeting millennial age buyers across the state. So, um, you know, and that's the great thing that I, f I personally feel about doing, you know, uh, ads via Facebook is how how you know granular you can get to try and deliver to people who aren't currently following you so um, at any rate so we're working across the state in this effort so and you can see some of the keywords that we've utilized from buying a house down to first-time home buyer and like I said earlier we're creating a series of messages to stay fresh um, that are targeted to engage the millennial audience and of course you know the example being let's combat the misperception that they need 20 percent down so our first effort um, right now is we're using our, our first home Illinois flyer, uh, which we created, uh, I believe, last year. But it really, you know, hits um, hits on our seventy-five hundred dollar dollar cash in, uh, assistance for you know down payment and closing costs. Um, you know, it's eligible for first time home buyers or anyone who has an home owned at home in three years. Um, and then the copy, of course, really driven towards you know millennials renting an apartment, still living with your parents. You know, we want to help enable you. We want to get you you know on the road to home ownership. So. Um, and it's 
um, so far, I mean, I, I, you know, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to share a bunch of ROI with with the with you all today. But I can tell you directionally here with what we've done just with this one ad alone that after one day, we've had 82 shares and 53 likes, and it's reached over uh, 20,000 people. So um, I expect that to be much larger now. But um, at any rate, the engagement's truly there. I've had you know many people engage me via Messenger asking for more information about the program. So um, you know, I I personally you know, believe in it, and it's something that I think performs well for us. Um, secondly, Google AdWords. Um, it's our first ever, a, um, effort in quite some time do, doing a Google AdWords buy. And many of you may know that doing a Google AdWords buy may be an effective means to promote your, your home ownership programs. People, you know, can search for terms for your homeowner products, and the keywords you've chosen match what people search for, and then your paid ad appears either next to or above the Google organic, uh, the organic Google search results. So I kind of, you know, pulled an example out there where you can see um, where one of our ads would be popping, you know, June is home ownership month, $7,500 down payment assistance. Um, <clears throat> so Google's a little bit of a trial and error to see what keywords perform best. But, you know, the, that's kind of great because Google offers the flexibility to change keywords in and out once you see what's performing and what isn't. So um, this, so again, this is a month-long effort to attract, you know, millennial home buyers with with a series of keywords, which you can kind of see on the screen. And again, our our creative message touts our DPA, and then ultimately directs them to our website. So Twitter, um, you know, we're of course doing a month-long effort here, and I, I'm sure every one of the calls available, you know, familiar with Twitter. It's an on-the-go platform. And it provides a unique opportunity to connect with existing, or in our case, new followers um, with the information that we're trying to get them to uh, quickly and easily. Um, and I found some stats, and I thought it was interesting that MRI, one of the stats that they had was, you know, millennials account for over 61% of users on Twitter. Um, so again, our goal, trying to engage a millennial buyer, we thought this would be, even though, you know, if there's a time to start or try to test it out, this is the this is time to do it. So um, our creative message touts our DPA again, again, you know, to help people realize that this can help them overcome the challenge of saving for a down payment, and then ultimately directs them to our website. So um, you can see the keywords that we have, which are, you know, we're remaining consistent with what we're doing with Google and um, and and Facebook. So um, and then you know, promoted tweets that these promoted tweets that we're doing will be called out at the top of you know some. Uh, top of some search engine pages on twitter.com and they may be visible within a user's timeline if our you know tweet is relevant to what that user's audience behaviors you know comes across as um, and then lastly uh, our homeownership quick tips and I'll if I don't know if any representatives from WIDO is on the call but I'll give them a little polite nod they uh, started doing um, an effort like this maybe about a month or so ago and my director and I saw it and said wow that's you know that's it's simplistic and sharp and you know that's one thing that you know not to um, I, I'm sure and maybe mentioned it but since we're all kind of in the same boat in the trenches together you know this is an opportunity that we you know should be able to share and collaborate and you know use each other's ideas you know if it's working for one HFA there's a probably good bet it's going to work for somebody else so um, I think the beauty of these uh, quick tips are is that it's a, if, if you're not doing anything this is something quick and easy that you can pull together um, and to make it look stylish and be able to just promote on your Facebook page or Twitter page or Pinterest page. So, um, so anyway, really quickly, you know, to, you know, this is to educate millennials and home buyers throughout Illinois. We have these quick tips, and um, they're intended to increase their overall knowledge about making a home purchase, you know, plan for challenges, and ultimately help put prospective buyers on the path to home ownership. So. Um, Many of the tips are helpful regardless of the demographic, but we did create very, you know, some targeted um, tips that are really geared towards millennials. So overcoming the, the down payment hurdle, buying instead of renting, and it allows you to make the tech upgrades that you truly want to your home, et cetera. So I've got a couple here that I'll just share with you so you can kind of see the, the look and feel of it. And the idea is that, you know, every workday throughout the month, we're just, we're basically posting these with, um, our hashtag as well as find your place which I you know that HUD announced as the you know the, the national hashtag for home ownership month so overcome the hurdle of down you know saving for a down payment get up to $7,500 in down payment assistance in select counties with an IDA loan and then you know talking about home ownership as a built-in savings again getting at that that building wealth message start today and 
learn more about how you can get up to $7,500 payment assistance in select counties with an IDA loan. So, um, you know, again, so if, if I would just, not, not that these tips are, you know, any mind bending or anything like that, but I mean, we're, we're posting these daily. Feel free to go to our Twitter timeline or our Facebook page and, you know, take them and, you know, re, you know, reserve them as your own. You know, I'm more than happy to, to, to share and, you know, a, a quick, easy win, so to speak. Um, because we feel like this is something that really helps educate the end consumer and, you know, gives, gives them, it builds credibility for us. Uh, that's, that, uh, that's our belief. So um, with that, that I'll, uh, I'll wrap up there and uh, I'll turn it back over to, to Ann and to, to Connie. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Dan. That's great. We appreciate everything that you're doing in Illinois. I'm going to... I will now turn it over to Connie. Thank you, Ann. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about what we're doing for Home Ownership Month. Um, to preface that we started working with a local firm, Brasco Marketing, last year and launched a campaign in October targeting millennials. Um, Dan did a great job of giving the research on that generation, so I won't repeat it. Um, but after we did our research, part of our campaign, we, we developed collateral, including a video and a lot of content marketing, um, blogs, infographics, ebooks. We promoted it through social media um, on our own platforms and also paid digital advertising of the video and some banner and text ads. Um, we decided uh, this spring that we were going to build on it for Home Ownership Month. And when I say this spring, I mean we waited until the end of April to start brainstorming um, and trying to figure out what could we do during Home Ownership Month that would sort of be attractive and, and engage millennials and continue to enhance our brand. So we decided on a game approach because not only are millennials big gamers, but we thought that we might hook in some Gen Xers who, you know, kind of started the whole video game thing. Um, and then given the time that we had, since again we waited until the end of April, we decided that we would use our existing content from the initial campaign in order to leverage the new campaign in Home Ownership Month. So what we have here is the Guide to Home Ownership. And, um, you know, we have a little sound button up here, so if somebody doesn't want the sound, they can turn it off. And we have a hamburger that, you know, gets people where they need to go if, if they get lost in the game. Um, and I think we must have skipped a page for some reason. I think it took us straight in because there's actually, there's actually a panel I'm not seeing now that, um, let's see if I can get us back out. I don't think I can. But um, where you actually pick your character and it gives you instructions and talks about it. So there is an intro to this. It's, it's just not there. Um, but once you get in, you pick your character, um, you kind of go through the game and let's see doesn't want to move and you get these little cards um, and this one's about renting or buying and it's sort of a fun thing if anybody's played life or monopoly where you get these cards and they tell you um, you know uh, like this one receive your renewal notice your lease is up in three months you know that that would probably be a setback um, but we talk about why are there many reasons for buying instead of renting and we give them some content um, and it pops up an infographic that you know we had already used throughout the campaign um, but just repackages it there. So, you know, they get some information from that and they go back to the game and they just keep playing and they're going along and there's some groovy music playing and um, then they get to the next card and this actually utilizes one of the ebooks that we had and it usually pops up a lot smaller, I think, just because of the, the webinar screen. It's, it's, it's really big on mine. But, and I'll only scroll through a little bit of it, it's um, basically talking about the different myths of, um, about millennials buying a home. And then when they come to the end, it basically gives them some information about our program and kind of drives them back to it. So, you know, they, they go through that. They're still in the game. And now we're just doing the suffering from FOMO. And I'm sure some people out there know what that is. Millennials are very big on their own little phrases and hashtags, and FOMO is fear of missing out. So we try to capitalize on that. You know, you're missing out on buying a house. And this actually plugs back into our original campaign. Um, if your best friend buys a house, suffer from serious FOMO, and then we 
take them to the video that we built the other campaign around. So I'll open that up and hopefully if you've got it on. So that takes them through the commercial that we did. It's just sort of a fun play on a lot of the apps that millennials use. That one was based on Tinder, which I didn't really know what it was until I had it explained to me. Um, then we go to the next card, and the content's going to um, talk a little bit about house hunting. And what's very important is understanding how much mortgage you can afford. And we take them to one of our blog posts about that. Um, and then when they come back, and let's see, our little guys going around. Um, we hit on the fact that all millennials love coffee. Who doesn't? And spending the day at open houses. But are you ready? Have you found the right lender? And what we do is we first take them to a blog about how to choose the right loan officer. But as they read through it, um, when they get to the end, they can click on a link that takes them to our interactive, you know, find a lender, it's our preferred loan officers. And once they enter it in there, um, there are contact buttons on there. So they can immediately, you know, click on the contact button and pre-populated email pops up and then they can send it in. And what's cool about this is we get copied on those. So we have an idea of who among our lenders is getting the most hits from our website. But it also says in the subject line, home buyer referral from NCHFA. So the lenders love this. We get thank yous all the time for sending them these referrals, which we don't really actually actively do anything. We just let them hit the contact button. So, you know, they've kind of found their lender, and they're still moving through the game. Um, and who doesn't love to window shop when they're looking for a house? So we play on that, you know, looking at the furniture store. But, you know, hey, you better know your basics about your credit before you do it. So we take them again to another blog that explains that to them. Um, and then, you know, you're shopping for a house and sometimes you just get tired. And so it's take a night off from house hunting, trivia night with a friend. We thought um, the best thing to connect them to was a little bit of mortgage trivia, um, which basically is a blog that explains all the different terms of um, buying a house, surrounded with buying a house or, or a mortgage product that they may not understand. Um, and then we take them back in and you know, they're getting ready to really actively house hunt at this point. So we tell them, you know, don't go to loan, find a preferred real estate agent. And that, again, takes it to an interactive area, which also has a contact button. Um, and these agents are people that have taken our program. So they're called preferred because they've taken our class, and we make that pretty clear. Um, then we get into the, you know, hashtag, again, house goals, because um, they love their hashtags. And it's not letting me move anymore. Let's see. Okay, and so, um, you know, creating a new um, Pinterest board, this opens up into um, documents that they need um, to be prepared to order it for to give to their mortgage lender. Um, and then we come back and, you know, they're, they're getting a little bit closer. Um, find the one. This is when they're going out and they're finding the house, their dream house. Well, when you're finding your dream house, especially, I don't know what the market is like anywhere else, but in North Carolina, it's been extremely hot. Houses are selling in a matter of hours. So here we thought it would be some, you know, four solid tips for how to get your offer selected. And this also is um, one of the eBooks that we did that, again, you know, at the end of it, leads them back to, um, to our programs and to more content. Um, and then as they come around the corner here, moving really slow. There we go. You see this little bird pop out, and um, some of you may have heard the bird tweet. And the whole idea behind this is if they click on it, it's pre-populated about um, the, this thing to guide other people to the guide to home ownership so they can log in and tweet it out themselves. Um, and we also have links to Facebook and Pinterest. So they can, they can pin it, they can share it on Facebook, they can share it on Twitter. Um, and that's just a way to kind of maximize our message. 
again, another um, popular millennial phrase is adulting. Um, so we talked about their offer being accepted, so they've reached the next lever of adulting. Um, and we give them, you know, the top five ways to prepare for closing day. And one of the things we've tried to do with all our contents, whether it be um, infographics or um, ebooks or these blogs, is really kind of couch it around like the top five tips for this or seven things for this because we found through our research that people really hone in on that. They feel like, oh, this is going to be an easy read. I don't have to spend that much time with it, but it's going to give me what I need. Um, so we will go back through. Um, they're preparing and come around the corner, and we have this like cool little lawnmower that just reminds people that you know you're probably going to have to buy some new things as a homeowner. You know, check out the classifieds. Um, and now, as we're getting to the end. We let them know they're almost home, and they keep going. Oh, the house is sold. The welcome mat has come out. They go into their new house, and we give them some more content at the very end, the basic skills every homeowner should have, which is another ebook. Um, and it's cool things like knowing where to turn your water off and, and things like that. Um, and then the learn more takes them directly to our buying a home page. Um, and you'll see on our buying a home page, we have the game here for people who wind up on this page and never played the game. So we kind of are marketing it um, in many different places. And then the game is over, but we give them the option if they want to start over or if they want to jump back to a section, maybe they kind of breeze through it and now they want to go back and say, hey, I, I didn't really read that part on the credit score. I probably need to do that. Um, so we launched this actually last week. Um, we haven't put a lot of money into it. Um, we're actually spending $2,500 this month in boosted posts, um, and then also we're pushing it out all on our social media platforms, um, and we've done links, as you saw, on our website and our um, original campaign website. Um, we did take a look at yesterday's boosted Facebook post, um, reached 1,200 people, and we found that 545 engaged in some way, which, it, which was either clicks, likes, or shares. Um, and that 23 actually visited the game and, and went through the whole thing. So we expect that will increase as the campaign continues, and we're also going to be tracking sort of what calls to action they're following as they go through it. Um, and then to supplement the campaign throughout the month, we're doing um, weekly blogs and weekly press releases. Um, you know, for example, last week, we did an overall press release on our Home Buying Resources for Home Ownership Month. And then on Monday, we did one um, launching this campaign out to the press. And um, next week, we will do one on foreclosure resources because, you know, we, we kind of couch it on, you know, sort of the other side of home ownership, you know, people trying to hold on to their houses. And then the end of the month, we'll do something as we finish the month and go into July on veterans and all the home ownership options that they have. Um, we've also promoted the game um, itself through eBlast to lenders and real estate agents um, and ask them to share it in all their social media and push it out. Um, and then the final thing I'll say is, um, I don't know if anyone noticed, but the game does not use the words Home Ownership Month at all in it. Um, we decided to do it for Home Ownership Month and to promote it for Home Ownership Month, but we didn't want to use those words because we wanted it to kind of remain evergreen. We wanted to be able to use it throughout the year. Um, and that will allow us to freshen the content, you know, as we create new blogs and new infographics. You know, we'll swap some things out to lead people through the path of home ownership. So I think that's all I have. Excellent. Thank you, Connie. Um, one, I, I'm going to ask the first question while I'm opening up our phone lines. Um, I need to scroll down and just hit a couple buttons. So while I'm doing that, um, I will kick it back to you guys uh, for a question for both of you. Can you speak uh, briefly about your resources, whether they are your human resources or financial resources? Um, can you talk about how this was created, whether it was in-house, whether you contracted out, um, and maybe speak a little bit more about the development of your project? Um. Sure, I can go first. Uh, okay. In terms of just, yeah, I'll, I'll and it, it'll be relatively quick. So, I mean, to be perfectly honest, for our, um, for the boost and the promotions that we're doing, you know, we're spending uh, approximately five hundred dollars on each one of our uh, efforts. So, for Facebook boosted posts, for Twitter promoted tweets, and Google AdWords, so five hundred dollars a piece. And then, just in terms of 
uh, development creative uh, we uh, the 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 firm that we worked with to to redesign and uh, our website uh, we have them on a retainer um, and so <clears throat> the, the work that they're doing is part of uh, a little bit part of the retainer and maybe a, a little bit extra, maybe an, an additional thousand dollars just to help to, to hone the look and feel um, from a human resource standpoint. I mean, I do, um, I mean, uh, some of the design myself, but you know, I would definitely lean on my, um, on my developer a little bit because his, his Photoshop skills are a little, uh, quite a bit better than mine. <laughs> so, um, but that's where we were at. So uh, Connie. I, I, you know, Anne, if you could just repeat the question real quickly, because I was trying to, to formulate an answer, and then I think I forgot part of it. Yeah, no, that's fine. It was just basically <laughs> about your resources. You and I spoke earlier today about uh -huh. uh, the, about, um, the developer that you chose, and, mm -hmm. I, and I just wondered if you could speak a little bit about that, working with them, just kind of walk us through the development process, and if you wanted to speak to any other resources. Okay. Um, well, fortunately, I mean, we had, in terms of developing the content, because a lot of this is content marketing, um, we had a lot of that in-house. Um, what we really wanted was somebody at a higher level for advertising outreach. So we had hired this firm last year to launch a different campaign, um, and then we decided to kind of brainstorm with them about this campaign. And so, like I said, the, the resources that we put into this campaign weren't as, as hefty as the year-long campaign that we were launching, but um, the fact that we already had a marketing firm that we were using um, and that we really liked their work and they understood what we were trying to do, they understood the millennial market and they were trying to build on that really helped. Thank you. I uh, just wanted to let all of you know that the phone lines are unmuted and so all of you are live. We um, have just about 25 minutes left on the webinar that we can use. We don't have to. We can use all of the time, a portion of the time. Um, I have had some conversations with some of you with regards to National Homeownership Month, just kind of, um, I did kind of a random sampling query just to ask, you know, what is happening in your states. And what I learned is that many HFAs um, do a variety of things. Some of you do a lot. Some of you, you know, just maybe a little bit. Um, we're kind of um, unique to our HFA and to our state. Um, yes, please remember that you are alive. We can hear you. Um, so uh, I just wanted to open this up again. And um, for people that had questions for our presenters, maybe I'll start there. Or if any of you would like to share, um, we would love to hear from you. Hey, this is George in West Virginia. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Hi, George. Yes. Hey, how you doing? Hey, good stuff from everybody. Really great. Just wondering, a question for North Carolina. Does the game, does that work on a mobile platform, or do you have to be at your PC or desktop to use that? It does work on a mobile platform, but it's not as cool. It's more like you're scrolling through it. You get to each thing, and, and it, it just, yeah, it's, it's not as cool, but you can use it mobile. Pretty nifty. I just played it. Pretty cool. Oh, good. <laughs> Thanks, George. Yeah. Brian, are you on the call? I am. I am. Hello. Hi. Hi there. Hi. I know that Indiana had a kickoff at the State House yesterday. Would you like to just take a couple minutes and share with the group uh, what you all did in your state? Yeah, sure. I'd be happy to. Again, this is uh, Brian Phillips with Indiana Housing. Um, as Ann stated, we did a, uh, and this is our third year of doing this consistently, of having a kickoff event uh, at State House of Indiana. Um, not necessarily for potential buyers, but really more for all the partners to get together and celebrate and share statistics and talk about how important home ownership is to our respective aspects, uh, you know, in the field and in the industry. Um, so our state habitat office, the Indiana Builders Association, uh, the Indiana Association of Realtors and the Mortgage Bankers Association. Um, had about 50, 60 people come out and uh, just a few remarks and uh, really touted the fact that Indiana has a 70% home ownership rate, which is slightly over the national average. And um, we've seen some great numbers over the last few years and with the market kind of coming back to life here in Indiana. So that was a good event. And that is really a follow-up from 2016 where we got our governor um, 
to uh, sign a proclamation for June being Home Ownership Month in Indiana, so we're very happy about that. Um, outside of that, we've also started a uh, campaign um, with some a couple of television commercials, which featured our executive director and uh, several of our staff in one. Uh, to kind of give a community feel for a backyard cookout um, where there's a new family that moves into the neighborhood and gets invited down to a cookout with all the other neighbors. Uh, that's currently running uh, prime time and some off prime time uh, here in Indianapolis and around the state. Uh, and then we have another one that will run uh, later in the fall, in the summer, and uh, will run for another three months through the end of the year. <clears throat> um, and then the last thing is that our quarterly magazine uh, we have a quarterly publication, IT Data Magazine, and that is going to feature a lot of success stories and infographics and storytelling related to home ownership um, as well. And personally, from my perspective, my recommendations for that, we don't forget the folks that have purchased homes from uh, from our age or got some assistance to purchase homes. So we also include some information from our Safe and Healthy Homes campaign to remind those folks that if you do own a home currently, uh, let's not forget about them and give them some tips on, on how to keep the home healthy and safe and, and things of that nature. So that's all I got. Thank you. That's wonderful. Thank you, Brian. Mm -hmm. Would anyone else like to share? I know some of you are doing some campaigns. Uh, this, is at Georgia, West, this is Georgia and West Virginia again. We're just basically, we had something that we were going to use that fell through with a guy who was using um, one of our low-income programs, but didn't happen the way we wanted it to. So we're basically just, you know, I'm trying to do, use Facebook and Twitter and basically all the free resources I can to kind of keep it front and center in our state. Kind of, And that's, we're doing that in conjunction with a, uh, a Facebook advertising campaign as well. Um, seems to be pretty successful. We've had a lot of new likes over the last few days, so so far so good. <laughs>